anytime there's change involved, there's always resistance. People who are naturally going to be reluctant to that change. Why? First of all, that's not the way we've always done it. They're, they, pe people are fundamentally creatures of habit. And so they want to do things kind of like the way they've always done them. And so some people on your teams are going to have a hard time adapting just because they're very comfortable in their current routine. And so what you have to do is you have to show up as a leader and you have to lead them through those challenges. You have to lead them through to see what the opportunity looks like if they adapt to those changes. You can't just come in and say things like, hey, we are going to do this now. And, and because I said so. As leaders, one of the best things that we can do for our teams is to explain the why behind what we're doing. When people understand the why, they can actually get behind the reason. When you just tell them what to do, you've got some good soldiers who will just do what you're asking them to do because they believe you and they trust you. And, 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 and that's because you built relationships with them. But also you've got people who, who, won't just, who won't do that. You have some people who just naturally, either you don't have that kind of trust or relationship or they're just not wired that way. And so what you have to do as a leader is you're going to have to spend time with the people on your team explaining to them why the new way of doing things is what's going to lead to success down the road. The hard part sometimes for us as leaders is that taking the time to explain the why feels like a step back. You as a leader may have this vision. You may, you may see that this is going to be the solution and you may be right. But if other people can't see that yet, it's going to be hard for them to get on board. And again, you're going to have different camps of folks. Some folks are going to get on board and just follow along because either they trust you or they're just good at doing what's, what you ask them to do. But you're going to also have a bunch of people who aren't going to get on right away. And that can be frustrating, but you've got to really see that your job as, as a leader is to educate and explain to your team the reason why you need to change and adapt to a certain thing. Um, and when you go to explain the why, just because you explain the why, don't expect that people are just going to naturally go, oh, okay, no problem. They may still not see it. They may not agree with it. Um, there may be times they don't, they don't see it yet, and, and you might get frustrated. And this is where one of the core tenets of, i.e., the title of the book, which is called Extreme Ownership, comes into play. A lot of times when we um, work with leaders and, and, and we, they have challenges and situations where people on their team aren't doing what they're asking them to do, we have to ask the question of the leader and say, well, well why, why are the people on your team doing what you're asking them to do? And, um, you know, well, you know, I don't, I don't know. Well, I mean, this would show up, this would show up in the SEAL teams all the time too, like new junior officers who are leading a platoon through training or something like that. We would, you know, we'd go out when they do a, a, an exercise that's, you know, meant to challenge them, meant to throw the team off. We put them in different situations so we can get the leaders to make phone, make calls um, under pressure and so we can see how the team executes when faced with different challenges and you know the whole thing is a disaster and we're doing a debrief afterwards and we'll go say to the leader like well, why isn't the team performing or why did you guys fail that evolution or why didn't you guys execute on time or why weren't you on target on time or something like that and you can take an example of that for your business like why didn't the loan close on time why didn't I you know why weren't the documents there where they needed to be why did I not foresee this underwriting condition? Why is it just popping up that the guy's divorced and he owes child support and alimony? Why? Why, did, why is it coming up three days before closing instead of at the beginning? Why? Well, you know, people will say, you know, sometimes, you know, leaders go, what? well, I don't know, you know, they're just not doing what they're supposed to do. You know, you know kind of challenge that young, young junior officer and, and, and say, well, well, why do you think that people, your people aren't doing what you're asking them to do? Well, I don't know. Well, is it because... Are they, they're not listening to you? Well, yeah, they're not listening to me. Why aren't they listening to you? They, they, don't, they don't trust you? Or what, they don't respect you? Well, no, okay, well, are they deaf? No, they're not deaf. Well, okay, are, are your people stupid? Maybe they just don't, they're stupid. Maybe they just don't understand. Um, well, actually, I kind of just gave it away there. Well, no, they're not stupid. What's the answer? The answer is, is that they don't understand. And the reason why they don't understand is why. Why don't your people understand? Who, whose fault is it that your people don't understand why they need to do the task that you're asking them to do? Whose fault is that? Well, it's your fault. It's your fault as a leader. And that's the big bottom line takeaway with extreme ownership. If you're a leader and your people aren't doing what you want them to do, they're not doing what you're asking them to do, whose fault is it? It's your fault.